Okay, so judging from my first tests, this Ucanix scanner very interesting. First, you have topology map, and this scanner costs around $400, so that makes it new, cheapest scanner with topology map. It also has ECU coding, it has free lifetime updates. Even though I think this brand is from US, European brands like this Alpha, this Alpha is very hard to scan. I tried bunch of scanners, some cannot scan all modules, some cannot do bidirectional tests, but with this Ucanix scanner, we were able to use bidirectional testing in all of these modules. We also rewrite our odometer. It comes with a lot of service resets, so value for the money seems really high for this scanner. Definitely caught my interest. I will make some more videos, but from testing so far, definitely can recommend this scanner and I will link it in the description. Today we will take a look at this Ucanic OBD2 scanner. This is my first OBD2 scanner from this brand and I haven't even used it yet, so we will take first look together. Okay, we have our user manual, Bluetooth VCI, so it is wireless scanner. Please create your account first. Okay, I had trouble setting up my account. I restarted scanner and also my phone because it kind of have problems staying connected to my hotspot. Let's try one more time. Register. Okay, connected to network. Sending verification code. Okay, now it seems to work fine. Let me check this code. Okay, I have my verification code. Now choose password. So if you will have same issue, just restart your phone and also your scanner and then it will work fine apparently. Activate serial number. Wait, how do I check this? Okay, this is the same. Submit. Product activated successfully. Okay, let's check this out. First, let's see settings. I want to do metric values. Also, let's check languages. So these are all supported languages. It's pretty good. There is a lot of languages to choose from. They also sell additional video scope you can connect for about, I think, 40 euros. I will leave the link for this scanner in the description. You can check it out, both scanner and these extra modules they have. OBD2, so this is connecting to global OBD. Service resets. Let's check what we have here. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 35, 40, 42 service resets, which is pretty good. We will try later how they work. But now let's go to basics, so most important feature will be diagnostics. But first we of course have to connect our VCI. And then turn on ignition. So Europe, let's go to Volkswagen. We can try this smart VIN. Maybe it will be able to detect VIN number from my Volkswagen. Okay, great, it was able to find my VIN number. Hit OK, Tuareg, it is not USA. And now we have diagnosis, common special functions, help information, car information. Let's check car information. Okay, this is just model and the year of make. Help information. Okay, this is pretty good. So we have even some OEM repair information with bunch of guides, for example, adaptation of EGR value. It will tell you exact procedure, which is very good. Also channels information. Now this is only for VAC cars, like Volkswagen, Skoda, Seat and Audi. When you want to do some settings or adaptations, you have these channels and sometimes you need to know channel number so you can find the setting you are looking for. And here we have these channel numbers explained. See like coming or leaving home time, channel 1, channel 2. And sometimes it only asks you for the channel number and you have to know which channel it is. So, so far it is very good. So we have included this information as well. Common special functions, so these are obviously commonly used for my car model. And then let's check diagnosis, let's try quick scan, oh, function not supported. So let's try the second quick scan. It even has topology, that is very good. I didn't even know before that it comes with topology. So before I tested Xtool D8S, which does have topology, and I already thought this is cheapest scanner with topology, but this one is even cheaper. So this is pretty impressive for scanner in this price range. I'm not even sure how much it costs. It is like three or four hundred dollars, but one of the cheapest scanners. For exact price, go check it in the description. Oh wait, but it is not scanning. I have to... So I can even select which modules 
I want to have scanned. This is very interesting scanner. Okay, so let's do select all and do fault scan. When you are scanning, you can see some dash warning lights. Like now it is scanning ABS, so my ABS light is blinking, but it is completely normal. Now full scan for this Tuareg with most of scan tools. I tried like three scan tools already and it is like seven, eight minutes to scan the whole car. Some cars are very slow to scan and this Tuareg is one of them. But it is progressing pretty good. Now we are at fourth control module, but there are a lot of control modules in this car. And here we have explanation. So green is normal without any faults. Red has fault codes. Here is also a number of fault codes. So in this module there are two codes. In engine there is seven codes. Brakes, one fault code. Then we have blue is subsystem exist and gray is no response. So this is either this control module is faulty or it is not even present in my car. And this is not the highest spec you can get. This is pretty basic to Eric, so it makes sense that we will not have all of these control modules, only part of them. Okay, finally we are scanning last module, this gateway. And now we have cars scanned. It took a long time like all scanners for this car. So it is not a surprise because there are really that many of modules. Okay, but what we can do now is report. So everything here you can customize to give out personalized report. You can do plate number, color of car, mileage, even add some custom parameters. And then these are number of fault codes and somewhere should be also all fault codes listed. Yes, here. Okay, here we have all fault codes and with this report we can even generate QR code. But I don't have my second phone here, so I will not try it. And then we can also save it or email it. Let's just save it for later. And now we can enter some system. Let's go to engine. Enter system. And let's check all the options we will have in single system. Okay, so in every system you will be able to read codes for that system only. In engine there were like seven fault codes, so now it should display all fault codes only inside engine module. And then for this fault code we can also check freeze frame data. So this is for this one code. This code P2012 and if I check freeze frame data, so these are live data for that one fault code. So fault code was stored during these parameters. I can see RPM 700, so engine was on, and this can give you some clue about conditions, where is your fault happening. Then we can also clear codes, so only from engine. Codes cleared. Let's check one more time, because not all faults can be cleared. Sometimes you can have faults that cannot be cleared until you fix your problem first. Yeah, and we have faults like this. Before we have like six or seven, now we have five. So only two faults could be erased. But that isn't issue of scanner active faults. So you simply cannot erase because they will get stored instantly back. Then we have ECU information. So data about your control module. We have active tests because it is bidirectional, of course. We can do either sequence or selective. Selective means that we can choose one thing to test. Sequential is doing this sequence which is already stored in car and it will test all components that can be tested. But let's do selective. We can do something simple like fuel pump relay. Press start and begin active test, okay? Now relay should be running, although I cannot hear it really good. Let's try something else, or maybe we can go to another module for bidirectional testing. Yeah, let's go to different module. For example, we can do body module. Body module is number nine. Body, 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 here, number nine. Central electrics, enter system. Now let's go to active tests inside body module. Oh shit, but there is only one test, low beam lights. Oh well, let's try it. I will press activate. And it will turn on my headlights. Now there should be more tests, but some of them are missing, but that's fine. That is normal. One scanner never does everything. Then we can also use adaptation. So with this we can unlock some 
hidden settings. You can go to this documented adaptation. Here is the thing I was talking about before. So before we had that list of channel numbers. So now I can go to this list and check channel numbers for this control module. Or we can just use this documented. This will be not all channels, but only some that are already documented. For example, comfort turn signals. So this is how many of blinks it has. So when you do just this, it is three blinks. But we can also adjust this value, set new value. Let's do five, which was the maximum. Set new value five, yes. Set OK. Now it should blink five times. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, cool. So scanner is also with ECU coding, so you can unlock some hidden settings. Okay, it was getting kind of dark in Tuareg, so I went inside. Here I have my Alfa Romeo, basically most electronics from it. And we can use it to test this scanner, same like with Realcar. So I have my VCI connected to OBD2 port. By the way, it also has kickstand. Some of these cheaper scan tools does not have it. It is very useful feature. Because we have to turn on ignition. Diagnostics Alpha. I don't think it can detect VIN number automatically here, so I will just select manually. 147 and quick scan. Oh, and here we don't have topology, so topology you will not have for all car models apparently. Okay, so scan is finished a lot faster than inside Tuareg. We don't even have that many fault codes considering we are missing the whole car. So let's enter these modules and we will do some bidirectional tests. We can start in engine. Active tests. We can try fuel pump relay, but we are missing whole fuel pump, so probably won't work. Let's try. Oh, relay works. Okay, relay. We can operate relay. Or we could try engine fan. Engine fan will work, should work. Perform. and stop or we can try AC compressor relay yeah I can hear relay okay good we can go inside another module let's try body we can try turning on some lights active tests let's do we can do low beams Done. Or high beams. Or we can try turn signals. Wait, one more time. So this only shows on instrument cluster, apparently. Yeah. because I still have my tour signals. We should be able to operate them maybe with this. No, let's try fog lights. Nothing, but I think we don't have fog lights in this setup. Or maybe we can do door lock. Maybe that will turn on hazards. Oh yeah. But it stays turned on. Wait, let's try doing it, do the release. No, or we can just do this one more time. Yes, perfect. Okay, interesting. Let's go to instrument cluster, for example. So in every module, you will have different bidirectional tests, like with every scanner. So now I'm inside control module instrument cluster. Active tests. We can test our gauges, for example, fuel gauge. Start and stop. Or we can test our speedometer. Hit start <laughs> and also RPM meter. Start. 
bunch of tests and then if you go back if you see this configuration that means there are some service procedures you can use inside this module so now we are in instrument cluster we can do odometer write now we have 270,000 so let's do 300,000 hit ok and we have 300,000 on dashboard <laughs> even though we are missing the whole car it's kind of funny and then for example if i go to engine there should be configurations as well but different service resets in engine there should be injectors coding because it is diesel engine so engine configurations yeah here you can code your injectors and then also let's check live data so we can do everything or custom lists now i am inside engine module okay let's do all Okay, this is pretty good. So we have two columns, so it is easier to find something. We have this list mode. Let's try this. Okay, this will make it one column. What is this batch top? Does it mean those values will get on top? Yeah, okay, okay, this is perfect. So you can even customize order of this data. Already this live data page looks really good. Actually better than with most scanners. There seems to be a lot more options. We can also do graphs. Now we have engine speed. I want to do accelerator pedal. I want to do accelerator pedal. We should still have accelerator somewhere here. Oh, here, accelerator pedal. Wait, let me try this. Oh yeah, we have some change, <laughs> this is pretty cool. Also live data graphs looks also very good. It is easy to watch one value, but then also you can do multi graphs, but I guess only to, if I do merge. Okay, if I do merge, I can do four graphs at once. That is pretty standard. And then history. Oh, here I can play the old data, but I haven't done any recordings yet. Okay, and then of course you have data recording as well. So live data seems really good with this scanner. Okay, so judging from my first tests, this Yukonix scanner very interesting. First, you have topology map and this scanner costs around $400. So that makes it new cheapest scanner with topology map. It also has ECU coding. It has free lifetime updates. Even though I think this brand is from US, European brands like this Alpha, this Alpha is very hard to scan. I tried bunch of scanners, some cannot scan all modules, some cannot do bidirectional tests, but with this Yukonix scanner, we were able to use bidirectional testing in all of these modules. We also rewrite our odometer. It comes with a lot of service resets, so value for the money seems really high for this scanner. Definitely caught my interest. I will make some more videos, but from testing so far, definitely can recommend this scanner and I will link it in the description.